the Everglades, a place that is both unique and beautiful with benefits and challenges all its own. The Everglades Research and Education Center was established to study those challenges and now boasts 10 faculty, 80 staff members and students finding solutions for agricultural and environmental issues. Sitting on 783 acres, EREC is the only academic research institution on subtropical organic soils in the U.S. and conducts research in plant breeding, weed science, sugarcane production, leafy vegetables and corn production, pest management, plant pathology, soil and water sciences, and more. Let's take a look back and see how 100 years of dedication and effort produced the state-of-the-art research and education center we see today. On June 14, 1921, the Florida legislature identified a need for an agricultural experiment station on the Mux land of Florida. Two years later, construction began, and in 1924, the first experimental plantings went into the ground, including corn, rice, sugarcane, and forage crops. Due to the lack of roads, boating on the canals was the main mode of travel, so a dock was built in front of the station to transport people and supplies. Hurricanes and flooding throughout the 20s kept the EREC from making much progress, and they faced cattle die-offs and other agricultural challenges. It wasn't until 1931 that the center even had electricity. 1932 was the first year since the center's inception there were no natural disasters, and the station finally had enough staff to move forward. By 1941, they found a copper deficiency to be the principal issue with Glade's pasture lands, and cattle were finally able to thrive. With the advent of World War II, the team put some research on hold to concentrate on supporting the war effort as production of beef, vegetables, and sugar was emphasized. Through the mid-century, the center continued to expand with plant breeding research for sweet corn and newly acquired land for a cattle breeding unit. In 1971, the station changed its name to the Agriculture Research and Education Center of Belglade, and in 1975, a new computer technology was incorporated, delivering improved soil testing. This expanded the researchers' ability to better advise producers, and data processing became a hallmark of modern research. The sweet corn industry in Florida was revolutionized by the breeding program at the EREC with the discovery of a key gene that made sweet corn sweeter and led to a growing and stable market. The center's successful plant breeding efforts delivered several varieties of lettuce in the 1980s, and sugarcane research continued. And in 1984, the center once again changed its name to Everglades Research and Education Center. The Herman H. and Ruth S. Wedgworth Laboratory was built in the 1990s, truly expanding the center's research capabilities. In the 90s, a new focus on water quality emerged as several federal and state laws were enacted to help protect the Everglades' water supply. The center also launched a new turfgrass breeding program focused on cultivars that could flourish in the South Florida climate. Glade Sugarcane fought a new battle with orange rust disease in the 2000s. The center collaborated with the USDA and the Florida Sugarcane League, developing resistant varieties and several fungicides to manage the disease and keep the industry going. EREC played a key role in new soil sustainability practices like fallow flooding, and cover crops to increase the organic matter content. These new methods improve farm efficiency, productivity, and environmental quality. The center also revised its fertilizer or nutrient recommendations for the sugarcane industry on organic and mineral soils. For a century, the Everglades Research and Education Center has served as a partner within the Everglades farming community. Through its extension service, the center continues to advise and implement new, innovative ways to keep industry profitable while protecting the environment. One of EREC's industry partners is Madeline Mellinger, founder and CEO of Glades Crop Care, managing one of the nation's largest independent crop consulting firms. Working together means she is able to provide her clients with the most updated information. Because the growers were at the cutting edge, hate to use that 
phrase, but they were, they were, they demanded the best and they weren't afraid of new things. So they just kept using, they devoured the research work that was coming out of ERIC and they continued to ask for more and more. They let ERIC know what worked and what didn't work, which is the way the land grant system is supposed to operate. So it was just a perfect fit. A perfect fit would be a good description of the center's association with local producer Keith Wedgworth, vice president of Wedgworth Farms. His company has been working with the Everglades REC for close to 90 years in a relationship that began with Herman Wedgworth, the very first plant pathologist for the center. For Keith, the EREC's guidance provides him and his fellow growers with valuable information, especially as it relates to Glade area's agricultural challenges. We're on organic soils here and uh, we have a lot different needs in other farming areas in, in Florida. So that's really why EREC was established to, to kind of overcome a lot of these different um, issues that farming on organic soils compared to, you know, sandier soils that most, most farmers here in Florida deal with. The organic soil Wedgworth refers to comes with its own unique set of complications for growers. In 1938, the center opened a soil testing lab to address plant nutrient deficiency concerns observed in vegetable production. Today's focus on soil testing is more important than ever, as the center works to keep the Everglades environment clean. These tests help local producers determine the nutrient requirements and meet today's best management practice goals. With the help of the EREC, growers have more than doubled their reduction goals and the use of BMPs has been a key reason. All of the growers in the area have um, mandated best management practices and we help them to be able to achieve sustainable agriculture production while maintaining environmental quality. The success of the best management practices really is important for the success of Everglades restoration in the area. One of the projects that I've gotten involved with was using barn owls for sustainable rodent control here in the glades. One of the things that people don't realize is that rodent pests such as mice and rats cause millions of dollars in damage to crops every year. And so uh, we were looking for an environmentally friendly method of uh, rodent control and we came across the barn owls. Uh, a nesting pair of barn owls can eliminate well in excess of 1,000 to 2,000 rodents per year. Sugarcane is still one of Florida's largest exports and those exports make up about 52% of the total U.S. value. Because of the muck-type soil in the region, different varieties of sugarcane had to be developed. Dr. Hardev Sandhu, an associate professor in agronomy, says research is key to keep sugarcane sustainable. So the varieties improved the yield as well as uh, improved the resistance of these uh, sugarcane to the diseases and insect pests. These varieties also uh, provide grows with longer crop cycle, so they don't have to plant more often. So that is also an other economic uh, benefit for the growers. Today, we celebrate a century of research and extension, keeping the local agriculture community profitable and minimizing ecological impacts. The Everglades Research and Education Center looks forward to the next 100 years and beyond.